right, this is part two of the Macintosh 512K restoration, and as you can see, it's sitting next to the Macintosh SE, because last time, or last episode, uh, we smoke tested the 512, and nothing displayed on the screen until I gave it a couple taps, and then a picture displayed. And uh, since that episode, I've completely taken the 512 apart, and uh, completely uh, dusted everything inside. Um, I took compressed air um, and completely uh, blew away all the dust on the inside on the uh, analog board and the uh, logic board, the floppy disk drive I uh, cleaned as well. Um, and when I put everything back together and uh, booted it up, nothing displayed on the screen again. And this time, slapping it just wasn't enough. I could get a picture again to flash on the screen, but I had to hit it a lot harder. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the CRT on the 512 um, by uh, replacing it, or I'm actually going to put it into the SE because uh, these two have the same exact screens. So um, I'm going to narrow down the problem to whether it's with a connector or the analog board or if it's the CRT itself um, and I thought the best way to do that is to um, uh, swap the displays. Uh, these analog boards are different between these two machines so if it's a problem with the analog board or with the connector I'm not sure if I can uh, test that but at least I could narrow it down narrow it down to whether or not it's the uh, tube itself. Okay, so here's the 512, um, and what you're going to need to completely disassemble this thing is a uh, insulated, flat-tipped screwdriver, uh, because this thing does have a CRT that you're going to need to discharge. That's why I have this um, these insulated alligator clips. Uh, you only need one. I have two for some reason. They came in a pack. Um, but yeah, you're going to need these. Uh, you're going to need a, a special Mac cracker, uh, which is just a really long um, security screw driver thing. Um, I don't know the like exact terminology for this specific screw set, but just look up Mac cracker on eBay or something, and you'll uh, you'll find it. And just a regular uh, screwdriver like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn it or put it down on its face like that. Let's see if I'm in frame. And what you're going to want to do first is take off the battery door, battery compartment door, because there is a little uh, screw that you're going to need the Mac cracker to get. Well, you don't need the length of the Mac cracker just yet. Um, you need that for the two screws in the handle or under the handle. Um, but yeah, just going to need to take this out like so. And I don't have my, uh, it's smart to have like a little plastic container where you can separate all your screws. I just use this uh, little nail um, container. Used to have nails in it, now I just use it to separate hardware from computers. Uh, then there's two black screws right here that you just have to take out. So, and uh, the black screws are always on the outside in case you put these all together and you're not sure which two go on the outside and which uh, two go under the handle. Uh, the black are always on the outside. And I don't know if you can see, but uh, let me look in the camera. Under here, there's these two notches. That's because there's screws deep in here that you have to get to with the Mac cracker, which is why it's so long. Um, so you just kind of have to fish around and get it in. Alright, I got it. And just unscrew. These machines are pretty easy to get into. Um, a lot of people don't like working with them though because of the built-in CRT which can shock you if you're not careful, but 
I don't think they can kill you. I've heard conflicting things. I've heard people saying that if you're not careful, you can die by touching the CRTs in here, but I don't think that's true. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say that unless you're really old or uh, have like a really weak heart or a condition, some kind of condition, then you don't have to worry about dying. It will shock you though and it will hurt. And then you just pop this top off, slides right off. And before I do anything else, I'm going to fish the screws out of the handle. Put those in there. Put this aside. And as you can see, well, I don't think you can see, but I have a flashlight. Um, there was some like corrosion inside here. As you can see, I cleaned it all out. Uh, so it looks a lot nicer. Alright, so here's the inside of the um, inside of the Mac. And now you're going to need the flat tip screwdriver and the uh, uh, alligator clips. Um, at this point, I want to say don't try what you're about to see at home. Uh, I'm not a smart person. Um, so I could be doing something completely wrong. Just don't trust me is what I'm trying to say because I don't trust me. And if I don't, then you shouldn't. Um, but basically, you've got to connect one clip to... Uh, some people connect it to the frame. I connect it to this, like, where the grounding wire is. Um, next, what you want to do is uh, take the other end of your alligator clip and connect it to your uh, your your screwdriver and what we're going to do is discharge the CRT uh, which is right here so basically what you want to do I'll zoom in what you want to what you're going to do this is a um, th you can actually slide this under like so what you're going to want to do is slide this under until you and by the way uh, when you're doing this don't touch any other part of the machine um, keep one hand behind your back and use the other hand just to do um, the discharging so this came off that could be a problem All right. so what you're just going to do I'm just going to slide this under and I'm going to make contact with the metal underneath here alright do that a couple times just to be safe Maybe come at it from another angle. Like so. It's kind of hard with a camera in the way. Come over to the other side. So just make sure you're touching. And that should make sure everything's nice and safe. Um, Alright. So I think we're good. Just going to do one more. Alright, and yeah, I think that's it. So next you just pop this out. Yeah, sometimes it's hard. You can just use the... Uh... Alright, so that's unplugged. You can get rid of this. You're good to go. Alright, so this is unplugged. You could get rid of this. Uh, next you can unplug. This is actually a plug on top. Um, just lift this up gently, like that, should be good, um, and then you have to unplug this, uh, which is right here, there's a little clip, but, uh, you push down on this clip right here and it should pull right out, um, this is still, however, connected to the face via this, like, grounding wire, so you just have to take uh, a screwdriver to that. But I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to wait until I get the analog board out, which is kind of easy. Um, now, I don't know if someone uh, actually uh, already opened this before I got a hold of it. Because it looks like there's some places where there's supposed to be screws where there isn't. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be two screws down here, but mine only has one, and it's right here. So to remove the analog board uh, after unplugging the... Um, actually, before I... One thing I should have done 
before any of this was, uh, um, oh, my phone's going off, was take out the analog board. So, uh, to take out the analog board, all you have to do is pull out this power cable, like so. This pulls right out, and also uh, undo the, the floppy disk drive. And then, the beauty of this is that it just slides right out, like so. And there you have the uh, logic board. And if you're going to set it somewhere, it's safe to put the, uh, the um, RF shield back on it. Revision B. So they didn't really have to do much to get that right. I'm just going to put it in the back casing. Uh, so now I'm going to remove the... Uh, analog board. Or actually, no, I'm still not going to do that. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the. Or can I? Yeah, I can. I'm going to get rid of the floppy disk drive. Uh, so there's four screws in the back. Boom, 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 boom. You just unscrew oh, these four screws here at the bottom of this frame. One right here. One right over here. One over here at the bottom. And one at the bottom over in this little corner. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of hidden by this frame, but when you're opening it up, you'll see it just fine. All right, so. Once that's done, that's all there is to it. The floppy disk drive slides right out. Uh, next, we're going to take out the logic board. Uh, first thing you want to do, so you don't forget, is there's this little screw right up here, the top, or connecting the analog board to the frame. It's like a grounding wire or something. Uh, you just need a regular screwdriver to undo that, like so. Alright, next there's three screws right here, right here, or there's one right here, one right here, and one at the very bottom. Uh, I'll just start with the bottom one. Like so. And then the two up here connecting it to the frame. Um, and boom. Easy as pie. Alright. Um, you're not free just yet. There's one more screw, and it's actually one of the CRT screws right here because of this wire. Um, it actually runs underneath of it. So you're going to have to pull this up. I'll just take the mat cracker and undo that. See? This little wire. And once that's done, the analog board is completely free. You just need to pull it out, like so. And this is the analog board. Oh, this little shielding came off. Um, so you got the power switch, um, the little speaker is right here, your uh, battery compartment, and yep, that's, that's it. I'm going to put this over here. So now that the analog board is out, there's only two things left to take out, which is the CRT itself and this metal frame. Um, you don't. I, I I obviously don't need to take out the middle frame because I'm. Uh, I just want the CRT. Honestly, I didn't need to take out a lot of what I took out, but uh, since it's a teardown, or, or since I have it open, I might as well do a teardown, uh, just to inform people how to. Or not inform. Uh, just to show people how to. Uh, disassemble one of these. All 
All right. So just four, or now it's three screws. Hold in the uh, CRT plus that one with the ground wire, and it just pulls right out. Pretty cool. Put that over here. Get out of the way. Um, one thing to note, obviously, when you're putting a CRT down face first, put it on like a towel or something so it doesn't get all scratched up. Now there's five screws holding the frame to this front face. Um, boom, 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 and then two here on the bottom. Uh, so simple enough. Just pull these out like so. Three, and then the two on the back. Turn that so you guys can see. Four, and lastly, number number five. Oops. That comes right out. Frame lifts right out. Pretty cool. Still the corrosion there. I kind of scratched some off of it, but that's not going to be enough. So there's the front face, the broken uh, broken corner. So if I wanted uh, a new one, I'd, I'd just have to buy this. This is what I'd need to replace uh, if I wanted to get a new face because of that crack in the corner from shipping. All right, next I'm going to be taking the CRT out of the Macintosh SC. Uh, this CRT is known to be working. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like I said, take out the CRT and then replace it with the 512 uh, CRT and see if it's, it, uh, when I boot the SC up, if it um, either does the same thing the 512K was doing, uh, not displaying anything unless you hit it hard. Um, that way, uh, if it does do that, um, then I'll know that the problems with the CRT itself, um, if it works just fine, I'll know that the CRT is good and that the problem is either with the analog board or the uh, cables coming from the analog board. Okay, so the SC is partially uh, reassembled. Um, doesn't have the hard drive, and obviously it doesn't have the back case, um, but has the 512K monitor in it. Uh, if I turn it on and the monitor doesn't work, uh, then either I was an idiot and broke it somewhere uh, in the disassembly and reassembly process, or um, it's a bad monitor, in which case I'll test the SC in the 512 and if it works just fine, then we'll know that the 512K uh, CRT is the, is the problem. Um, if this works just fine, then we'll know that the problem is either with the 512 analog board or uh, one of its uh, cables. So uh, I'm going to turn it on right now. Okay. So, the, uh, it's a little wonky, uh, I have to adjust some stuff, but as you can see, the, uh, this is the 512K monitor, and it's working just fine. So, the problem has to be with the, um, I guess the analog board of the 512. Uh, or it could be any of the wires. Not sure. Um, but that definitely narrows down the problem, which is good. So before cleaning up, I thought I'd test the uh, 512K's uh, disk drive, uh, floppy disk drive. And uh, last time I tested it, it was giving me the floppy disk with an X symbol on the screen. And since then, I've uh, blown compressed air on it completely cleaned it out. Um, haven't cleaned the reed heads yet, but uh, that's something that
that I can definitely do. I don't have a system disk for it. I have an 800k system disk and it's stuck in the floppy disk drive of the SE right now. Um, but I think this is a 400k system disk. I need to look up if 512k... I'm pretty sure 512k uh, Macintosh has used 400k floppy disk drives, but I'm, I could be wrong. Um, I'll look that up and uh, clarify. But uh, I'm plugging it into my SE now, and it's actually giving me the... Uh, let me actually, let me turn the brightness now. As you can see, it's giving me the question mark, as if it's awaiting a system disk instead of the X, like it was giving me. So that's definitely a good sign. By the way, this 800k floppy disk drive is not plugged in, uh, as you can see. Um, so the 400k disk drive is the only thing plugged in right now, and the computer is definitely seeing it, and it's it thinks it's in good enough condition to accept a system disk and work. Um, still have no idea if it could actually read the disks once they're in, but this is definitely a good sign, I think, uh, going from the uh, sad X icon to the question mark icon. So there is hope, I guess, for the floppy disk drive. Um, the CRT works, so honestly, I just have to see what's wrong with the analog board. And uh, once that's done, we can fire it up, get a system disk, uh, I'll order a system disk, and see if uh, everything else works. By everything else, I guess I mean the uh, logic board. But it uh, looks like this computer isn't as dead as I thought, which is good, and that there's a chance for it to work again. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so other than that, uh, this has been... Colonial Puppet. Hope you've enjoyed part two of this restoration video. Uh, have a good day.